I was terrified of the ocean up until I was about 11 years old. And then just one day it changed. Makes you feel alive. Gives you adrenaline, whether or not you get a good wave or, you know, a cup of beating. I think it's that feeling that you're always chasing. Kind of hunting for details. That's what excites me, it's what inspires me. For me, I want to show people that there's beauty in these areas. A lot of people might not get the chance to see that. I've noticed changes with the way those environments sort of behave. And if I can make other people see the beauty in it and see that there's something to care for, protect, have something in their mind in their day-to-day -day life that their actions do affect these environments over time. And if I can inspire people to experience it for themselves or make the connection with that image and, and their behaviour, I feel like that's what I want to get out of my work. you learn about something, the more comfortable you can become with it. I'm not really a fan of big city life. I've sort of tried to shape my life around being outside, <coughs> doing the things I love. You've got to spend time in that environment. Whether you're shooting waves or landscapes in the mountains, shooting wildlife, I get great enjoyment out of it. Conditions don't always have to be, you know, crazy big waves or perfect, but it's just being outside in nature is sort of my favourite thing and having a camera to capture some of those moments is like what I love to do. Scotty and I go shooting all the time. I think it's rare for me anyway to have a session where I'm not shooting with Scotty. I really get stoked on seeing the work that people produce with the housings that I've built. I mean, my dad has kind of taught me most of the tinkering skills that I know. 
when we were younger, had a Sony Hi8 camera and wanted to get that in the water. So went to Bunnings with my dad, raided the plumbing section and yeah, $50 later, um, ended up with a, with a camera housing. That was actually the very first camera housing that I built. There were definitely a few leaks to begin with. We eventually got the thing watertight and yeah, it was, it was great. I think we used it for you know, a solid summer. As a 14, 15 year old to get shots of yourself surfing, I think it's one of the best things you could get. You know, it was a side project to begin with. I was working as an engineer. I guess it's just going from there, batch after batch after batch of housings. I definitely enjoy the process more than, than the end product sometimes. You kind of just got to force yourself to learn some new skills and, and really push yourself. I think if I wasn't keeping myself busy, keeping my hands busy, I'd yeah, probably go crazy. I just love tinkering and building things. Keep pushing forward with the ideas. If you think you're onto something good, just run with it. You know, do everything that you can to push forward. And I think that's what I did at that time. You know, I had good support from the family, friends, and my partner. Yeah, I think that really helped to propel Salty to where it is. Oh, Spence is just a hard worker and it shows in his work. He's putting in the hours, day in, day out. Uh, I just spoke to him the other day and he'd spent eight hours shooting in the water uh, just because the waves are good. Swimming eight hours with a red housing, it's probably pushing you know eight to 10 kilos, so it's solid effort. And he was still smiling at the end of the day. I've learnt over the years that you just don't have any control. Like I used to get so angry when like, the waves would be too big or it'd be too windy or just haven't been able to like, outswim waves or rips. A lot of the stuff I do is just filming outdoors. So you're always at the mercy of the weather, just assessing the conditions and making sure you're yeah, not doing anything too silly. I think a lot of people don't realise the kind of knowledge that filmmakers have with the ocean. People just assume you just jump in and you point a camera and it's kind of, you're getting someone in a 10 foot barrel, but you've got to worry about the waves, the wind, swimming, your camera, camera settings, everything. And then you've also got to make sure that when that surfer gets that wave and you've got to be in their line of exactly where they're coming, you basically just got to guess and you got to line up and then just hope that there's nothing else that's gonna get in your way. So there's a lot that comes together. You don't just like point and shoot and hope for the best. If you wanna do it properly, you've got a lot of stuff you've gotta nail all at once. I think what I love about traveling and filming is seeing different parts of the world. Being able to document it, it's just like such a bonus. It's such a bubble here and we just get caught up in our little dream world of Sydney and is living in this paradise but it's so good exploring and seeing different parts of the world and even nowadays there's some jobs or like assignments I go on I'm like this is so much fun I can't believe I'm working. Even when I started doing it trying to kind of pursue a career and I still thought it was just so fun and there's some days if I'm swimming in an ocean somewhere overseas and filming waves or filming animals or whatever it is. It's just like, how good's this? Yeah, there's moments you're like, wow, this is cool. Have a few of them. <laughs>